There's a lot of talk of these new consumer AI hardware products like Rabbit and Humane, but I think the best product out there that's totally underrated are these Meta Ray-Ban glasses. I've been wearing them for several months now. I wear them pretty much every waking hour because they're my prescription glasses. And I'm surprised that they're not more hyped. I've literally never seen another person wearing them. So to tell you how underhyped it is, despite living in San Francisco, I haven't seen them. I think they have a few killer features and it's like a super affordable price point. They cost 300 bucks and then I spend another 50 bucks putting prescription transition lenses in, which is like not that different from what you'd spend for any other glasses. Looks, you know, depending on your perspective, I think they look great. They are Ray-Ban glasses. I think these are the headliner variety. And then there are like a few features that I love using. So number one is audio. Um, it's like AirPods, but you don't have to put anything into your ears. There's a directional speaker that goes down there. No one else around me can listen to what I'm hearing, but I can hear it talk to me if there's any AI prompts or I'll listen to Spotify or calls. For me, you know, for the most part, if, if I'm on a call, if somebody calls me, I use these. I don't actually put in my AirPods. Now, they're not as good as my AirPods Pro, which have noise canceling and obviously are physically blocking my ears. But if I'm out in the street and I want to hear what's going around, on around me, it's actually totally fine. Um, number two is the camera. So I just took a photo. Um, as you can see, um, this lights up when you take a photo. Um, this is where the camera is, actually on the left side. And you can take a video uh, for 60 seconds at a time when you, when you press down and hold, and then you can stop it. Um, the photos and camera or, and, and video are only taken uh, in portrait style, which some people don't like. Totally fine to me. I think the best camera is the camera you're carrying with you and not having to take out my phone to take a picture is awesome. It also, I also like that it doesn't distract me from what's going on. Like I can be completely in the scene without, you know, without taking out my camera and kind of ruining what's going on. So as an example, I was playing with a baby recently and just started recording or I could be, I was, it often happens where I'm somewhere where I see something cool. I don't want to take out my phone or I don't have the time to take out my phone. I could just press the button and boom, a, a photo is taken. So pretty useful there. The third feature that I think is pretty useful, but I think not, not like the number one reason I would get these to be honest is the AI component. So as an example, I can, here I am like in New York in front of a Kate Spade store. I could say, hey Meta, what am I looking at? And it says, I'm looking at a Kate Spade store, <laughs> um, which obviously I could just look at it and knew that. Um, if I asked it specifics about the dress, it also could tell me that. Um, but there are other things I use it for, like I could say, hey Meta, who won the Oscar for best picture last year? And it said everything everywhere all at once. It's not like, it's actually pretty damn fast. It's, it's, it, it responds it, with, with pretty good time. So the AI stuff is good. I think I tend to hate voice as an interface. Don't like voice assistants, don't like voice notes or anything like that. So I probably only use the AI a couple times a day. And one of those is inevitably to tell me what the weather is. But overall useful, I think like half the time it works and tells me what I want it to. Half the time I get some answer that's not as good as I want, which is also true of OpenAI, ChatGPT. So I think it's like perfectly acceptable. And I'm sure obviously it's gonna get better. The the other things that are sort of cons are number one, battery life. So the battery lasts like four to five hours, meaning you kind of need to charge it a couple times during the day. It might last a little longer if you don't use it. Obviously, depending on usage, it lasts less time. It's not that bad though. It's kind of in my flow. I carry the case with me in my backpack and the case itself charges it like AirPods and you only need to charge the case every few days. Uh, I think the case has like a bunch, maybe six charges in it or something like that. 
So it's not that bad once it's in the flow. The, the other thing that's a negative is actually, has nothing to do with the glasses themselves, but how they interface with the Apple product. There's obviously been this, these Apple lawsuits about green bubbles and blue bubbles, but I think, uh, and you know, you can disagree or agree with, with, with what people believe there. I think that Apple has locked down their hardware in a way that is not favorable to, to other folks working with it. So as an example, taking a photo with these, they don't automatically upload into my camera roll. I actually have to do this, like, it does this complicated thing where it like connects to my glasses via Wi-Fi and then uploads them. Again, like I've gotten used to it, it's not a big deal, but it's just annoying. And that's something that I think probably works easily and fine with Android devices but not with Apple devices. But long story short, if you wear glasses anyway and are into tech and trying new stuff, there's no reason you shouldn't own these. They're great.